Hey, Rock of Ages. I'm Pastor Soto again. Uh, as you figured it out, I'm still once again resting my back. I'm kind of getting used to speaking to you in this position. It allows me more time without making faces uh, because of my bad hip. But uh, I hope you'll allow me to come into your home today and pray with you once again as we have been for the past few days. Uh, we need to pray every day actually and, and I, I'm trying as much as I can to come out here and sneak away if you will a little bit and just just pray with those who want to pray with me. A lot's been going on. Every day it's a, a day of adventure. Uh, what's the latest? Next to this virus thing and everything else. Uh, now they're burning Bibles in Portland. Wow. You know, I was thinking, uh, if I can, just give you a thought for a second, how all of this began, you know, this virus thing. Uh, it began with a blame game. Uh, well, it's China, or it's this person, or these people, this nation here that sent it loose. So it was a blame game, uh, country to country, nation to nation. Then it began a political blame game. Well, it was Trump, and no, the Democrats are the ones that did all this, and and got people up in arms, so now there's a political war going on. And now it's social media, uh, Google, uh, YouTube, everybody else is uh, hiding answers and uh, medications and all this stuff. Then it became a race uh, situation here uh, with uh, the death of that gentleman that was that died and was killed or whatever uh, they're saying it was. Uh, there is a raging war against whites and blacks, white privilege, um, Black Lives Matter, all these things. And I was thinking, wow, I mean, it's it's kind of like stages, right? It's It's gone. There's such a, a, a hateful uh, attitude and ambience uh, in the whole world, it seemed like today. But I was thinking at the same time, that this proves how confused we really are as a people and how ignorant we are of God's truth. You know, the Bible says that our battles aren't against flesh and blood, that our frustrations aren't against, you know, me and you, you and me, and us and others. But it was against the darkness and principalities, the devil himself, basically. And we finally see in this last day, just yesterday, whatever this happened, news blurted out that now BLM and all these people out there are burning, the rioters rather, are burning Bibles. And you, I felt like finally the devil rears his ugly head out and says, this is what it's all about. It's about excluding God. It's about my, my hate towards God and his creation, his people. You see, whether we're white, brown, black, uh, yellow, uh, whatever nationality, we are all created uh, by the Lord and we are the fiver of one we are all family but we lost sight of that and it wasn't I don't think it was an individual doing like I purposely want to hate somebody but because we've been driven away so far from God we are open prey to spirits and to uh, things of the Antichrist things that will lead you away from holiness and sober mindedness and uh, nothing is left but flesh. And, you know, flesh is nothing but envy, greed, strife, um, arguments and fights and death. And we see that spirit loose in our world today. And I'm hoping that America and, and those of you listening to me today would pay attention and find out today that finally you get to see the climax of it all. Uh, what does the Bible have to do with it? What does the Bible have to do with all this stuff? Well, I think the devil couldn't hold it back and finally got his pawns, those who were willing to listen to him, to bring out and, and, and cast out their, his final insult. Here's in your face God's word. I'm going to burn it. And now Christians are up in arms and angry, upset, obviously because they, they, it's offensive. But even for us Christians, we need to understand that Jesus said all of this would happen. He said, they're going to hate you. If they hate you, they hate me. And uh, they're not rejecting you or it's not about you. It's about me. 
my plan, my initial plan uh, for this world and, and your life. It's been a battle that didn't begin here in the United States or in China or whatever, but it began in the heavenlies. Yeah, the Bible says that the devil was one of the main or if not the main cherub up in heaven until his mind got full of pride and he said, you know, I'm going to become like God. And the Lord took care of business really quick. You'll have to read about it. Maybe next time when I get together, I'll read a little bit out of the scriptures for you. But he cast him out. He cast him out of heaven. And him and a third of the angels came out because they were followers of him. And he came and he sowed this ugly, rebellious, greedy, murderous attitude against God. And so here we are, the nation, away from God and open prey to the Lord of the flies, the devil himself. And this is why all of this is happening. And you'll see how he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, the Bible says. He's killed people. Uh, he's destroyed families. He's destroyed friendships and relationships. People are arguing. Uh, I see it over the internet, arguing over positions that are senseless and uh, the most ignorant arguments. I'm serious. If you're going to believe in one political party, just believe it, but keep it to yourself. It's no big deal. Everybody has the option and the right to believe what they want. What we should concentrate on is knowing that right now the devil is using anything and everything he can to stir the hearts of believers to get angry and become just as vile as everybody else. But we know that they can burn all the Bibles if they want in the world. Get them all. Get a, get a backhoe and put them in a hole and light them all up. It doesn't matter. The sad part is going to be if you don't have the Word of God in your heart. Because they can burn every rice paper sheet and every book with black letters on it and red letters on it that says Holy Bible and New Testament, NIV, the message and all these, they can burn it all. And it'll become nothing but ashes because it's material. But the Bible says that God's word is spirit. And that's what keeps us alive. It's alive and effective in us. Let them burn whatever. All they're doing is causing a mess they're going to have to sweep up tomorrow anyway. So I want to encourage you today. Lift up your eyes and look up to heaven. And keep your eyes on Jesus. The Lord said, if they hate you, let it be for a good reason. But just remember, they hated me too. He walked all the way up to a cross and died. And the other part of the world was saying, yeah, die. Let his blood be on our head. And there was a minute remnant of people around him on that day that knew he was king and Lord. Well, that's all that's left, it seemed like today, just a remnant of believers, you and I. Let's come together. Our Savior isn't dead. He is more alive than all these people can imagine. One of these days, as the Bible says, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. It's going to be a horrible day for many, but for us, it's going to be a day of great glory. So listen, believer, Christian, Rock of Ages, Instagram friends, both near and far, wherever you're watching this broadcast, this video, listen, be sober, be happy. We're still here. It, nothing's going to change. While the Lord is sitting at the right hand of the Father, He is our mediator. He is our perfect lawyer. He is our physician. He's everything to us, our Savior, the lover of our souls. Those are words that no one could ever burn out of my heart. It doesn't matter what they do. They can tear anything down, throw every bomb they want, and get all the terrorists to come and shake this world if they want, but they'll never take the love of Christ from our hearts. So, be encouraged. That's why I'm here today. Be encouraged. And I want to pray with you. And I want to pray for courage. I want to pray for sobriety. Uh, I, I want to pray for, uh, just rebuke that spirit of just addiction to be looking at all the negatives. You know, the eye is the lamp of the body and the soul and the spirit. And when you allow your ears and eyes to be uh, galvanized by these things, I mean, what else do you expect? You're going to fight with the next person in front of you. You're going to hate people that you don't even know. Oh, 
there's all kinds of hate right now for the president, for the Democrats, for this and the other. You don't even know any of them. Can you imagine how foolish we or you look when you're arguing about someone or something you have no clue about? Stop it. The Bible says, the Lord speaking, he said, if anyone should boast, let him boast in the fact that he knows me. Let you know Jesus, that you know the Lord. Amen. If the straw man is going to boast, whatever, don't let him boast in the fact that he has power in this world. But let him boast in the fact that he knows the power of God. If the rich boast that they can shake things because of finances and money, we don't boast on those things. We boast on the riches we have in Christ. We are a rich people. Trump Plaza and Bill Gates and all these people, uh, uh, the Google guy, whoever he is, all that money and stuff, it's going to rot. They can take nothing. But the riches we have in Christ are eternal and nothing can cause them to rot or fade. So let's sow our riches in heaven. Let's keep the joy. Let's keep showing this world that regardless of how ugly it gets, believers in Christ like you and me, we're going to walk with our heads up, our back straight. We're going to lift up our hands to heaven. And we're going to say thank you, Jesus, because we're still standing even in a time such as this. You are Lord and you are Savior. Would you pray with me today? Father, we love you. And I thank you for the opportunity that I have to speak into the hearts of the people who are listening right now. Father, I pray right now, God, in the midst of all this chaos, Lord, that you would help us, Father. Yes, Lord, we just place all these people, the rioters and BLM and uh, the left and the right and all these people that are confused and all this stuff and fighting for, at the end of the day, they're going to figure out for nothing. Yeah, we place them in your hands, God. Would you speak wisdom to their hearts and give them the, the savvy, the, 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 the wisdom to walk away from this kind of stuff. But Lord, I pray for every believer right now. That Lord, that the devil is trying to do everything to sway us and to cause us to, to turn away from the righteousness of who you are, God, and turn to the ugliness of what the devil is doing. I pray for courage. I pray for sound mindedness. I pray, God, that you would blow away the clouds of confusion in the minds of your people. And Lord, we would understand and know that the battle isn't ours. The battle is yours. They don't even know us and they profess to hate us. We don't even know them and we're saying we hate them. But Father, you said, if they do, let us know, first of all, that they hate you. It's, that's, all, that's all it is. They, they, they hate righteousness. They hate who you are. They're trying to obliterate your name. And they've been doing this for thousands of years and they've never been able. So if they tried for thousands of years, what makes anybody think that your name will be erased and forgotten in this year? It's not going to happen. You are God and God alone. There is no other like you. Like it or not, this world will one day recognize the fact that you are the King of glory. And so for every believer, Father God, I pray that you would give them peace of heart, peace of mind, fill our hearts and our mouths with songs of deliverance and know that this too shall pass. And in the end, Lord, you will get the glory and the praise and the honor. And it will be us, Father, who will bend our knee in worship and raise our hands in praise and say, you are God and God alone. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We pray that you bless your people that you heal the sick, those who are being attacked by this virus now, Father, I pray that you bring healing and, and God, that you would just minister their lives and, and allow them, Father God, to, to, to be well. Lord, we ask you for these things today. Help us financially, help us materially, but more than anything else, help us spiritually to maintain our tenacity and our confidence in you. We are not of those who shrink back, but those who remain and are saved. Let us be patient, for in just a little time, he who said who will return, will return. So we wait for you, O King of glory. Bless your people. Bless our friends out there uh, on social media. Thank you for listening today. Father, bless them. Let them know that you are real. And all of this will pass, and you will get the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope you don't mind. Maybe I'll do this again tomorrow or sometime soon. 
God bless. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the only way. Don't let nobody convince you otherwise. God bless.